And so I'd like to just think about a kind of a, a continuum or, mis, or a balance bar almost uh, that, that, uh, that therapists and our clients have been going through. And one is I call numb reactive. Numb reactive. We human beings, we, we shut down, uh, uh, many of us. So numb reactive. So it's not peaceful. That's why I'm calling it reactive, okay, inside. And then the other end I call agitated reactive. And then some of us bounce back and forth. But agitated reactive, that's where we rant. Uh, that's where we uh, obsessively, you know, you, you, uh, you wake up to see what uh, Trump's 2 a.m. tweet is. Uh, so agitative reacted, and then the center part that on my better days I get to, as I call grounded responsive. Grounded responsive, that I, I'm having the feelings, I'm having the worries, also the, the hope, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be informed, uh, and I'm, um, what I do is going through my cerebral cortex, I'm actually making choices and decisions. And so I think this, this is one way to think about the challenge for us as therapists in working with clients, and it's also a challenge for our, uh, it's a way to think about a place for our clients. And so what I, ass I assume that many of you in your clinical work are working with clients who have all of the feelings that we just talked about here, anxiety, insecurity, physical symptoms. I do a fair amount of work with uh, medical doctors and nurses. And uh, the TMJ clinic. <laughs> I don't even need to say more, do I, this, this audience? <laughs> Great thing about this audience, right? You just say TMJ clinic, they go, OK. <laughs> Move right along, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, people with uh, uh, having memories of, of uh, bullying and abuse, uh, um, it just this, this is coming out in our clients, especially immigrants. Um, and you know, the, I come from the Twin Cities, uh, which has uh, many immigrants from all over the world, uh, and a tremendous fear. Um, parents leaving home in the morning, worrying if they're going to come home. Um, um, uh, you know, the kids told not to answer the door anymore because you don't know what's, what's going to happen. Uh, the resurfacing of anti-Semitism, um, you know, whenever a society is stressed, that demonic force comes out again. Um, so I, I, could, I could go on. And then some folks who describe themselves as privileged, so a, a, a physician um, who said that she's having a kind of hard to name distress that maybe some of you are experiencing, a, a kind of a breaking of her sense of the world, which she saw the arc, you know, the famous line, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Well, it hasn't been bending that way recently. And so there's something that is disturbing to her in, in a kind of profound way about whether we're going in the direction of more justice and fairness. And then the interpersonal realm. So in families, in, in couples, in friendship groups, you know, I like to say, if you want real ideological diversity, you find it in extended families. <laughs> the people that married in, or the, or the, the cousins, you go far enough out, because our friendship worlds are mostly self-chosen. Uh, uh, occupations tend to be more politically similar. Uh, but extended families and people are, are um, cutting one another off. So a, um, uh, a, a woman who uh, probably voted for Trump, she and her husband, uh, came in to say that their gay son, who is volunteering in another country, uh, working with, with poor people, found out that they voted for Trump and said, you're no longer my parents. And, and he said, and he said he was thinking of killing himself. So, I mean, that's a, that's a really strong reaction. But there are these cutoffs that are occurring on, on all, all sides of this. 
So what we have, and I want to I introduce a term here, what we have is political stress. Political stress that's not been out there in the research on stress and coping. I heard it for the first time in Latin America in the 80s when I was giving a presentation to family physicians and doing a routine, you know, popcorn, uh, what are some examples of stresses that families are experiencing? And they said political stress, you know, with regimes that came in and disappearances that were occurring uh, and crackdowns that were occurring. Uh, and it was, a, it was at that point a new term to me. And a big theme of my, my talk here is that we've historically had a divide in therapy between the personal and the public. And we've almost thought, unless you were a family in a historically oppressed group, if you're working with American Indian families, um, African American families, uh, certain immigrant families, if, if you're working with a group who historically has been marginalized and oppressed, well then, then we've said in the field, well then the public political is of course really important. But it was always a myth, it was always a myth that this membrane between the public slash political and the personal was firm or solid for any of us. It was always a myth. Do you agree with me on that? It was always a myth. Uh, and, uh, and now that membrane has been punctured countrywide. It's been punctured. The last time it was punctured in my memory was after 9-11 when it was impossible not to be a therapist and talk with people about this. But then we didn't have the large-scale terrorism uh, continuing, in this country at least. And there was a sense with 9-11 there was this external force and we were temporarily united. Remember that little era? Okay. Um, here we have more like an emotional civil war. Uh, and, uh, and this one um, is, is not is not going to go anytime soon. So what, what I'm really saying is that we need to develop our skills, we need to expand the paradigm of psychotherapy so that we can deal competently, ethically, sensitively with political stress in the therapy room.